Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the American Dream. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the special election coming up on March 14th to replace the Pickering School. With us tonight as guests who are advocates of replacing the Pickering School, uh, Mayor Judith Flanagan Kennedy. Welcome to the school, Thank Mayor. Thank you. To the show. Thank you. And Brant Duncan, who is president of the Lynn Teachers Union. Thank you, Jim. Yep. Welcome both. So listen, tell us how this all started. Why did the city of Lynn decide to get a new junior high, or two new junior highs, as it turns out? You want me to take that? Sure. That'd okay. Be great. Um, actually, it started way back in 2010 when we decided to replace all of our, well, at least two of our middle schools. And we determined that the Thurgood Marshall needed replacement more immediately than the Pickering. So we went through the process with the Mass School Building Authority in order to obtain a maximum uh, reimbursement amount of 80% of the cost. And in 2016, we opened a brand new Thurgood Marshall Middle School. Everybody raves about it. State of the art. Um, of course, with that opening, it made the educational <coughs> inequity between the middle schools or among the middle schools in Lynn that much more evident. So we had started about a couple of years prior to that to put a new Pickering in the pipeline. And it was determined by the MSBA that because- What's MSBA? Uh, the Mass School Building Authority. Okay. And uh, they determined that we would have to build a school that would accommodate 1,660 middle school students. Um, and that would make it the largest middle school in the Commonwealth, as far as the- How'd you like um, to be principal of that school? No. <laughs> 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 um, so we ended up, instead of having to uh, construct one more new middle school, looking at two new middle schools. And, and that was their idea? Yes, that was yeah. the MSBA's, Mass School Building Authority's idea. And it's a, a package deal. It's like we had twins instead of a single baby. We have yeah. to do this as a package or uh, not have it get done at all. So we um, looked at many, many different sites. And in fact, we looked at different configurations and even looked at a school with a common um, core of an auditorium, a cafeteria, and a gymnasium with two separate middle schools on each wing. Uh, but the space allowed for that and the fact that it could only have been built on a very large parcel of land where the concentration of the students coming in are in the South Lynn area, which would be around Commercial Street, Neptune Street. People would refer to it as West Lynn, although geographically it is uh, in South Lynn. So um, we got the same design builders who had done the Marshall Middle School as the project manager and the project architect. And they, um, through a series of meetings and hours and hours of vetting various locations, uh, chose the Parkland Avenue site for a smaller school holding approximately 700 students and the McManus Field site over in Westland that will hold a little over a thousand students. And that brings us to the vote to finance those two schools. Okay. How much money are you getting to, from the state? Well, the, um, the state claims it to be an 80% reimbursement rate. That's based on Lynn's income level, poverty level, and so forth. But in reality, the figure comes out to something less than that because we can only count so much per square footage. It's capped out at about 275 a square foot when we're actually paying more like 325 a square foot. Um, so when all the figures are calculated, the city would be responsible for about $80 million and the state would be giving us about $110 million. So it's okay. still a good deal for the city. Oh, sure it is. So what, what's the uh, uh, state of the art uh, uh, new school mean to Lynn? What is state of the art? I mean, I know you get smart boards and you get... But what, well, I think the educator would be able to speak to that. Well, sure. So, you know, I think one of the things that we're proud about um, in regards to the Marshall School are the electives that we're able to offer the kids and 
Um, those are electives that we weren't able to offer at the uh, former Marshall School, the former Easton School. So uh, those uh, programs include cooking, sewing, um, video spaces uh, similar to this. Uh, those this are is a new studio, by the way. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. magnificent. It's beautiful. Yeah. So those are programs that we didn't have the facilities for or the technology for at the former uh, Marshall School. And, and these are programs that are of high interest to the kids and um, really are applied math and applied ELA uh, programs. So it's, it's really connecting what kids are being taught uh, to uh, real life skills. So it's, it's been a tremendous success. Good. So did the teachers union vote on this to endorse this program? Are you just, uh, teachers are in favor of it generally? How does that work? Oh, sure. Um, we were very active in the um, Marshall Middle School campaign and uh, very proud of the result. Um, and, and we continue to support uh, the building and refurbishing of schools. Uh, we did, in fact, take a vote of our membership uh, back in 2015 to support the Pickering uh, building project, um, knowing that there may be some, some details of the project that uh, were not uh, decided at that point, uh, but knowing the, the significant need um, to replace uh, Pickering and, and the value of a new school to our, our kids and, and community. But uh, we're, we're proud to do that. Um, and from the perspective of the, the learning conditions of our kids and the working conditions of our, our members and educators, it's, it's a win-win for, for everybody involved. Okay. So, Mayor, you said you considered other sites. This was a committee that was formed to, to uh, yes. investigate? It was the Pickering School Building Committee, okay. subcommittee of site selection. And those other sites were discarded because they weren't appropriate for yes, building I mean, two schools? Yes, um, there were some that were located in floodplains, okay. some of them that had narrow streets along its perimeter, which would make um, for really uh, difficult traffic control. There were a couple of sites that were formerly owned by GE that we thought might um, present some kind of a contamination hazard and we didn't want to put a school on a, on a place like that. There were others that had, um, uh, for example, the Magnolia site comes up a lot in the area of Magnolia Park, uh, but that has a culvert running under it that's very old and we're worried about disturbing the soil and finding out the condition of that. It also contains a water main that supplies water from the MWRA to the towns of Swampscott and Marblehead, and Lynn would be solely responsible for moving that pipe and continuing to supply water to those two towns while, while we were building, and it just really became... And that would be an expensive project. Very expensive yeah. and, and not worth it in, in the long run with the money um, increase and the time delay. It just didn't seem to make sense. So it came down to two sites. One, McManus Field, mm -hmm. and there doesn't seem to be any controversy about that. Am I right? Uh, Not really. Yeah. I mean, uh, we obviously at my office get calls with people expressing opinions about the, the need for the schools. Um, and of course, there have been some objections to the building of Pickering, but we really haven't heard anything uh, objecting to the the site uh, located at McManus Field in Westland. Okay, so let's talk about the site on Parkland Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, there are objections to that. Yes. And some of the objections are, they say it's on wetlands, is it on wetlands? There are wetlands located on the parcel. This is a 40 acre parcel. Right. And we would be building on about 12 acres and the way that the project is designed, the wetlands would remain uh, protected and undisturbed with okay. this building. Okay. What about the woods? Uh, we have a letter that I received from the Friends of Lynn Woods indicating that the parcel in question is not a part of Lynn Woods. It is merely undeveloped land. Um, and as okay. a result, the Friends of Lynn Woods have said they're expressing no opinion on the site of the um, proposed building because it is not part of Lynn Woods. Okay. What about uh, the eminent domain issue? That's a serious issue for the person whose house is being taken. Oh, of course, of course. And the city has been in regular contact with, it was originally two houses that were um, considered for taking by eminent domain. Why, why are they taking, why are they proposing to take one house? Because the, um, 
the entrance to the school, the road that will lead to the school, is located diagonally across from Richardson Road. And the proposal is to put a traffic signal at Richardson Road and Parkland Avenue, and then have the road continue straight across without having drivers have to jog to get over to a road. But the, there's a house right there. Yes. Um, In fact, I visited the site this morning. Okay. And I came up Richardson Road, so I know exactly what you mean. Okay. Right. And and we have even offered. This woman is is a sweet lady, and she um, wants to be near Pine Grove Cemetery, and we are even offering a proposal right now yeah, whereby that. her house would be moved down the road about 200 yards so she going could toward, remain going toward Westland near, near the salt shed yes yeah. on that property close to the dog park and that would allow her to retain her familiar surroundings and remain in her neighborhood while still allowing the logical access road we also looked at moving the access road up uh, about 1500 feet up Parkland Avenue toward West Lynn. That would require a much longer access road. It, we would have to build a bridge over the wetlands and we would have to bring all the utilities that extra distance, which added another two to three million dollars to the proposed cost. Right. So this seemed to be the most logical way to go. So the underlying policy for uh, eminent domain is for the public good? Yes. And this sounds like it's for the public good? Because yes. it certainly is going to save money and mm -hmm. make it more well, feasible. Could I just add something to Brent? Brent was talking sure. about all of the nice elective classrooms. Can I just interrupt one second? Sure. By the way, that for the public good, that's, that's the legal uh, basis for, for this action. But that doesn't help the person whose house is being taken. It's oh. a horrible nightmare. And uh, so what you can do for her is great. And we're so. very cognizant of yeah, that. Okay. And we have counselors and we had the... Um, homeowners who had had their house taken as part of the Thurgood Marshall uh, building project meet with her and discuss it with her. So we're doing everything we can to make it as easy as pos possible for her. We do recognize right. that nobody to wants a, to be uprooted. It happened to a good friend of mine down in the old West Lynn when they did that, those takings back in the 60s and it just devastated him mm -hmm. you know, for life, really. Uh, I, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, but one thing I wanted so to add me. about the, the classrooms is not only are we looking to bring Pickering into, uh, you know, to have a second and with West Lynn a third state-of-the-art middle school, but the current Pickering, believe it or not, doesn't even have a library. They have two carts that they will roll around with books on the carts and allow the children to choose books from that. It doesn't have any science labs, so there are no science experiments going on at Pickering, whereas uh, the science labs in the, the Thurgood Marshall Middle School would really um, make any university proud. They're wonderful. And, that's it, and that's what we're looking to fix, is the educational inequity that is occurring in Lynn right now. Good. That some children are getting a state-of-the-art building in which to learn and lots of elective choices, and other children are choosing their library books from a cart. So how much is this going to cost? The total project cost for both schools is estimated to be about $188 million. So um, that amounts to, when you factor in the state aid, about $200 per year for about 25 years to the average taxpayer. Okay. On that note, I recall seeing a study. Uh, this was several years ago, so it didn't have anything to do with this project which basically said that if you have new schools in a city, it, it really improves the whole quality of life in the city and the tax base and it encourages people to move in. And it's, so from an economic standpoint, is, it can be helpful. Absolutely. That doesn't help those tenants, by the way, whose rents might increase, but and that's something to be considered. But uh, Right, it, it's just one more benefit. I mean, uh, the most obvious and direct benefit is the education oh, that yeah. our children will receive. Both of my children, they're in college now, but they went to the Pickering Middle School, and Pickering was in sad shape even when they were there several years ago. The sixth graders are in a sub-basement. When they want to look out the window during class, they have to look up toward the ceiling in order to see any kind of daylight, and it's just not an appropriate um, learning 
unique situation for those children. Okay, Brett, anything to add? Well, I have a, a unique experience where I've worked at uh, Pickering for, for eight years. Um, I worked at uh, Breed for four years, and, and two of my kids uh, go to Sisson and, and they're prospective Pickering um, students. So, you know, not only is this professional, it, it's, it's personal, and, you know, I can see the, the value that um, the Marshall School offered um, their community um, in East Lynn. And um, having worked at, at Pickering for eight years, it, it's a, a wonderful, wonderful school. Um, but we really need to do better for our kids and, and provide them a, a school that's uh, deserving. And, you know, in terms of the breed, um, you know, I think one of the goals of the, of the city is, 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 is really going to be helpful for the, the breed uh, community, where uh, currently there's about 1,300 students at breed, and um, it, it's built for about 950. So uh, one of the um, attributes of the West Lynn uh, School, it will alleviate the overcrowded at uh, breed. And um, by, by doing so, uh, we can bring back some of the programs that were in place back in the 70s when breed was built. Um, you know, I worked in the E-Wing, what we call the E-Wing, which is the uh, industrial arts uh, section of, of Breed, and, um, you know, we had to repurpose uh, the, the space so that we could offer math and English classes, and, uh, you know, we didn't have the space uh, to offer the kids the electives that was once there. So, you know, I think this will directly impact um, all of our middle schools um, and, and all of our prospective middle school students. and. Um, New Pickering, state of the art, alleviate the overcrowded at Breed. And uh, believe it or not, the uh, Marshall School already has 100 to 150 kids uh, more than it was intended for. So um, I that, uh, sure you uh, that, that will be a, a benefit to, to the Marshall kids. So, you know, when we talk about parity and equity um, across the city for our middle school students and uh, talking about addressing the space issues, um, really makes um, a lot of sense for our community to make an investment um, in our public schools and our public schools kids. Okay, so let's talk about the opposition a little bit. There, there's a, apparently a question of title. Uh, I've seen a letter from uh, the, the city solicitor, Mike Barry, who's a re highly respected attorney, who says that Lynn has valid title to the property. What does the mayor say? Well, this isn't the mayor speaking now. This is the mayor who used to be a lawyer in her former life and did some real estate transactions. Um, the basis upon which the opposition is claiming that the land belongs to Pine Grove Cemetery are some uh, city journal entries from the late 1800s and some information unearthed at the Peabody Essex Museum. And as the city's law department rightfully points out, there is nothing at the registry of deeds that would indicate anything other than that the city of Lynn has clear title to the properties in question. And as our city uh, attorney also rightfully points out, the registry of deeds has been the method of checking chains of title for 400 years in Essex County. And no bank, no lender would ever expect a prospective buyer to be looking in the archives of the Peabody Essex Museum to find out who owned his land somewhere back in the chain of title. Everything must flow through the registry of deeds in order for us to have a property ownership system as we do today. So I'm, I'm confident that the city of Lynn will be found to have um, the sole title and clear title to the property in question. But if, if a lawsuit is brought, it ties everything up, right? It does, and that's why we tried to avoid the lawsuit by offering to give to the Pine Grove Cemetery Commission a portion of the 40-acre parcel that won't be used for the school and won't be used for, uh, it's not wetlands purposes, but we could use it for, or they could use it for the expansion of Pine Grove Cemetery. And so far that offer has not been accepted. Well, who, who accepts the offer? I mean, is there, is there an entity that's opposing this effort or? There is an organized group. Um, yeah. I think they're called Preserve Our, Protect Our Reservoir, Preserve Our Woods, or words to that effect. Yeah. Um, so they are the entity that is um, 
I guess, threatening legal action if we were to go forward with uh, this project. Okay. So anything else, Britt, uh, you want to say? Well, you know, we've, um, as a, a union of, of educators and, and parents, have um, formed a, a committee in, in support of the city's project. Um, we're, we're called Two Schools for Lynn. And, um, you know, we've been out uh, canvassing and, and phone banking and, um, you know, find that there's great support among our community for um, the projects. And, you know, no project is, is perfect, um, but I think the folks that we've talked to um, recognize the importance um, to uh, the future of our city and to the future of our kids. So, you know, we're going to keep at it and keep working. And uh, we have a, a, a tremendous group of, of volunteers uh, that includes city activists and uh, educators and parents um, and elected officials and um, we'll be successful on the 14th you know not for anything other than our kids and you know we're proud to do that okay so on the 14th the ballot places are open from 7 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night same polling places as the regular election is that right yes okay so pick a turnout what's the percent turnout going to be I guess that's the big question, right? Uh, just for conversation, let's say 10 percent, 20 percent. I'm taking the under on that. I'm going to take <laughs> 6 percent, and if it's a really um, rainy or snowy day, right. I'd bring right. it down to 4 percent. I it's don't think there will be much of a turnout, so every vote is going to count. Right. And um, I, I expect uh, it will be a spirited campaign for the next two weeks on both sides. Um, but I am very optimistic that, that the um, people who are in favor of building the schools will prevail. Right. Are you having debates or anything like that? Or? Not that I know. Do we have no, no, we've just having conversations with, with the community on the phones and, yeah. you know, I'm inviting knocking. the opposition to come on to this show next week. That's good. So that they can give this. Hi. Nobody will ever say this to you. That's like you being Fox News fair and balanced. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd be compared to Fox <laughs> News. <laughs> um, and I would point out, if I may, Jim, that this is a package deal. Um, if this vote does not uh, succeed on the 14th, we essentially go to the back of the line for the funding again at MSBA. We can't just vote, say, in favor of the West Lynn School and against the Pickering School. It's an all or nothing vote, and it really would push any new That's school good. projects back by, uh, I, I would estimate, a couple of years, because when we originally tried to get the statement of interest for Pickering and we were denied, I believe it took us almost two years to That's get back in the pipeline. Point. That's an important point. So, the, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, you know, does a, a great job and, and there's, you know, literally hundreds of applications right. and, you know, maybe a dozen or two um, awards to the grants to those uh, applications and, and the needs are great. And, you know, we're fortunate to have successfully built uh, the Marshall and, and we're hoping to continue that. Um, you know, the, the mayor and the city um, also have utilized the um, MSBA um, for smaller type grants to uh, replace um, roofs on, on some of our schools, windows. Um, so we, we have a lot of momentum uh, with the Massachusetts School Building Authority and, uh, you know, we hope to keep that going. I mean, certainly there's, there's need um, across the district to uh, um, address some of the deficiencies in, in some of our schools. And my personal hope, and I think the mayor shares this, is that building upon Marshall, successfully uh, building a new Pickering and a new Westland school that, you know, several years down the road, we can continue that construction project with some of our elementary schools, um, and, and that would just be um, very beneficial to our, our community. So I think this has a long-term impact on our, our relationship with uh, the Mass School Building Authority. Yeah, I think so. We, in fact, had already prepared a statement of interest to replace the current Tracy Elementary School. Um, but when we found out that we were going to be building two middle schools instead of one, we had to shelve the Tracy plans until we get through um, the cost of financing these two middle schools, and then we'll see where we stand. But I can tell you that as things stand right now, the next school in the pipeline for replacement is the Tracy Elementary School. Okay. We, we recognize the need, um, but we need the voters' support to help us effectuate the change. All across the country, 
schools were built in the 1900, and in literally 1904, 1905, and they need to be replaced. Uh, we're all operating the country. five yeah. buildings that are over 100 years old yeah. now. Okay, so what about this compromise? I, is uh, how is that being handled by the other side? Do you know? I mean, uh, did they take a vote? Uh, uh, I have not heard the uh, response to the offer, but the offer from our side is coming from the city solicitor's office. But I have not heard uh, a final response as to whether it would be approved or not. Is there an opportunity to mediate this situation? I mean, I we would be willing to do yeah. so if it would keep the project moving and on schedule. We would absolutely right. agree to uh, meet with a mediator. How many acres are on the parcel altogether? The total parcel is about 40 acres. I would say about 8 to 10 of that is wetlands. And we would need uh, about 10 to 12 for the school, the infrastructure, the parking lot, the roadway, and so forth. So there would be a good amount of land left over that um, could be offered to the Pine Grove Cemetery Commission. If would there be a charge for that? I want to say no, but I don't want to commit the city sure. to anything. Okay. But okay. I think I would be willing to do that in the interest of not forfeiting the hundred that's plus about million dollars right. in grant that we're getting right. from. And the it's school about half the parcel, is that right? Yes. Yeah. I'd also like to reserve a little bit of land up there, just um, with a with an eye toward future needs. Because where are we going to put the new Tracy? I don't know. Maybe we need a new senior center. We've recognized as a result of this exercise in citing these two middle schools, how land poor the city really is. And we know that we have needs to replace elementary schools, but we also know that we'll be right back at square one looking for appropriate siting places when we start in on the next school project. But that would still leave a large chunk of land for the right. cemetery. Okay. We have to wrap this up. Do you have anything, any final comments? Well, I, I guess for, for more information, um, you know, interested citizens can, can look at the City of Lynn and the Lynn School Department's um, website. There's uh, some terrific uh, information, including uh, presentations that have been made, um, you know, previously. Um, if there's any um, interest among uh, folks to um, get engaged in the campaign to support uh, the two schools, uh, we're Two Schools for Lynn. There's a Facebook page, um, and um, you could call me at the uh, Lynn Teachers Union office. And uh, we're happy to uh, work with any citizen that's interested in, in supporting the campaign. And that could include, uh, you know, phone calls and canvases. And that would be very much appreciated. Okay, great. Anything else, ma'am? Only, only to say that we, in my office and in my administration, truly want to see fair and equitable education for all of the middle school students in our city. And the only way that we're going to be able to achieve that is to build both of these middle schools. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Good it's luck. It's great to election. see you. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. Guys, we've been interacting with each other. He wants to.